Apple released this in late 2020, I was able to afford one as a student in late 2022, which means I have used the MacBook Air with M1 Apple Silicon for about nearly 3 years now and I have used it long enough to wear it out. The problem now is that the MacBook Air M1 refuses to behave worn out even after nearly 3 years of intensive use. When you consider the way it was in 2020 and how it is now in terms of the performance, the way it handles updated ARM and Rosetta apps, you'll see it hasn't even aged a bit. Nonetheless, my friends, I'm going to have to still upgrade this Mac to the MacBook Air with the new Apple M4 chip by the third or fourth quarter of the year 2025. Reason being that I have to buy another MacBook. The thing with we tech enthusiasts and tech creators is that when there are so many variations of a particular kind of device or devices, we have this tendency to get bored with the one we currently have. But guys, there is a single mature reason for this upgrade. Forget about my whole tech enthusiast BS, it's the RAM. You know, I bought this with 8 gigs of RAM and for a single reason, when I was buying it, 8 gigs of RAM offered the cheapest option for that variant. And I also saw myself as someone that would never need more than 8 gigs of RAM. Yeah, I was that mediocre in my work. Back then I was using apps like Filmora. You get, Filmora is good quite alright, but then it is nothing compared to Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro, which are obviously more demanding. Normally, 8 gigs of LPDDR4X RAM, 4 to 6, 7 MHz kicks us. We all know that, and I know that also. Someone once compared my videos with how Marcus Brownlee and Aaron's videos look. Exactly. Not trying to boost, but then I'm just trying to like tell you guys that the 8 gig RAM was enough for me to like reach the foundations of professional level editing. Speaking of professional level, I started handling ProRes and ProRaw and large kinds of files. I don't really like ProRes though, it's too heavy. But then I could run it on my 8 gig RAM, Apple Silicon Mac, and even edit it. Naturally, 8 gigs of RAM is a pain in my ass. You should see Parallels desktop try to run with that RAM. It doesn't end well at all. And honestly, Apple uses that decoy of RAM to make you think your Mac is slow, but then it's just the RAM. Because let's be real, if I bring a MacBook Air M1 with like 16 gigs or let's say 24 gigs theoretically, it would shit on most MacBook Pros, whether the M2, the M3, that have only 8 gigs of RAM. That tells you that RAM has a lot to do in how good the overall performance of your Mac is. Anyway, since I want the M4 so bad, let's compare it with the M1 Air on paper. Display tech, they are almost equal. We have 500 nits on the M4 Air and 400 nits of brightness on the M1 Air. Supports for a billion colors XDR on like the M4 Air and supports for like 256 million colors on the M1 Air. It sounds huge on paper, but then in real world use, if you carry them both to the sunlight or outdoors, you can't use either of them. You would need a MacBook Pro with a mini LED display to have a chance in sunlight. They both still have supports for 10 bit color. Dolby Vision and HDR. For the speakers, I would prefer the placement of the M1 MacBook Air speakers to the M4 MacBook Airs. Yes, the M4 MacBook Air sounds clearer and more detailed. And also when you play on like medium volume, it sounds like you can tell that it picks more of the detail from the audio file than the M1. But then the M1 has this punchy, bassy, boomy vibe. It has this like aggressive kicking sound. I don't know if that makes sense, but if you guys have seen MacBooks that have this side speaker placement, and when you think about it, it makes sense. Why? Apple reserved the side speaker placements for the MacBook Pros for a reason, but then they went through the trouble of taking those speaker holes and putting it under, or was it like back of the display? around there for the MacBook Airs, even the 15 inch. Obviously that tells you that the side speaker placement is the premium option here, not what the MacBook Airs have now. For ports, just MagSafe 3, that's the edge the M4 Air has over the M1 Air. That's also very decent because like most times one of my USB Type-C ports is always occupied by a charger and it would be nice to have something else take over that role. For portability, I would pick the M1 Air because of its slimmer profile and wedge shape. 
yes overall they occupy almost the same amount of space but then the m1 has that razor like sharp tiny tight profile battery life they both have similar rated 18 hours although i feel like when you put them both under heavy load the m4l offer more thanks to the power efficiency of the apple m4 soc for the disk speed they both have similar kinds of nand chips that's two for each of them but then the m1 s still has slightly better read and write speeds that shows you how good the NAND chips on the M1 AR. They are good enough to stand the test of time. For the cameras, we have significant upgrades on the Apple M4 MacBook Air and that's the 12 megapixel center stage camera as opposed to like the 720p FaceTime camera on the M1 Air. But then who really cares? Most of us that have Macs have iPhones, which means you would rather use a continuity camera after all it offers unprecedented levels of quality almost lossless and it works seamlessly on every single app that uses the video of continuity camera for the m4 chip itself which is like my main point of the upgrade yes we have a 10 core cpu layout as opposed to a formerly 8 core cpu layout on the macbook s and the six efficiency cores in that cpu layout handle most of the work which helps to save more battery and if you even load a MacBook Air M4, you notice those efficiency cores, they are always the ones that are revved up, while the performance cores are mostly almost idle. When you run macOS and like navigate the interface, let's just use a 16 gig RAM M1 Air for instance in comparison to M4 Air. When you like navigate the interface of macOS, you enter mission control, you open and close a number of apps, you enter settings, you, you know, move between windows and desktops, it's identical even on the 128 gig macbook pro no much difference there we have upgrades slight but significant to the encoders of h264 and h265 on the m4 apple silicon and i do a lot of rendering like this video for instance is h265 i don't really use av1 or prores that much but those encoders are worth the upgrade. For me though, the main reason is the RAM, apart from the M4 chip. Because if I had a 16 gig RAM of the M1 Air, I wouldn't really be thinking of an upgrade. Yeah, because 16 gig RAM is more than enough for what I need. And I wouldn't really notice any slowdowns. The point is that since I plan to buy another Mac, and of course you can't upgrade Apple storages because everything is so bad. If I go for the M2 Air, of course I will spend money. M3 Air, same goes for that. M4 Air, same goes for that. And since the M4 Air can be gotten for around 999 by default for the base model, or 854 for like Amazon US currently in the US, or 899 for Apple's education discount, why not just spend there? You know, you get your 16 gigs of RAM. Of course, you could use the MacBook Air M4 for like five years without any slowdowns.